The first talk is instrumenting any Android app to get detailed HTTP stat by Gaurav Lochin, senior developer, Little iLabs. Thanks, Amanda. Hi, everyone. Uh, I have 15 minutes. Just because you guys can get to $1 billion of revenue in like six years, you expect us to like squeeze our talks into 15 minutes, but I'll do my best. Um, I work at a startup called Little Eye Labs, which made the news because it got acquired by Facebook a couple of months ago. I'm going to talk about one feature in our product where we do something interesting. We take Android apps and we wanted to learn uh, exactly what network calls the apps were making. So not really intelligence at scale, but should be interesting. Um, I'm going to talk about Little Eye just to give you an overview. Uh, why we did this network HTTP stats feature. Uh, what is instrumentation? A uh, little bit on the Android runtime and build. Um, some instrumentation approaches we looked at and then what solution we went, went ahead with. So Little Eye is a developer tool. Android developers can use it, understand the performance and resource consumption of their apps. So it shows them things like power, CPU, memory, battery. Um, it shows a lot of interesting context like logs, um, garbage collection events, system events, network events. And at the same time, it's capturing screenshots. So I'll just go to a really quick uh, demo. If this allows me, can you guys? So this is the UI. It's scanning all the apps on my phone, right? And I can just pick an app and start monitoring. So I'm going to show you a run that I did earlier. This is the run for the Flipkart retail app. Now, this is showing me the power consumption of the app on an instantaneous basis, each second how is the power consumption uh, going on? And it's actually telling me, like if you look at the red line, it's CPU that's uh, leading to battery consumption. Uh, the yellow line is display. So you get, as a developer, you get a sense of where your uh, battery consumption is going from. Um, now CPU looks like it's peaking a lot, so let's look at a CPU graph. So now this tells me on a percentage basis uh, how much of the Flipkart app is using CPU. And I can see, still see some of these peaks, but I really don't know what's happening. So I can go to a threads view. Um, now for each point of time, I can see which thread is consuming the, that CPU. So here, I, I don't know if you can read it, but there's a thread that's, the UI thread is consuming about 80% um, of CPU, I think. So as a developer, you get this information right away, right? It's really easy. Um, you get to see logcat events. So if there's an error in your app, this is a error in, in your logcat, you can see that. Um, and the thing I'm going to focus, you can see the memory footprint of your app. So this is largely stable. It's a very short run. It's a 48 second run. But at the end of the run, you see that green line go up. So that's the native memory being used by the app. And I don't know what's happening, but my guess is that this is a web view. Um, and the web view implementation is actually in native code. Is there a, someone from the retail team who can, is this like a web view right now over here? Any idea? Okay, so that's probably why you're seeing the native memory graph go up. Um, this is the network graph. At this point of time, the app is using 120K. Here it's about 80K, 80K, and another 120K. And the interesting thing is that in 48 seconds, the apps used one MB of data. Right Now, data is really precious. People are paying for it. So um, just, again, a quick question to the retail devs. Any idea what this one MB of data is? If anyone from the retail team is here. OK, hey, Vijay. Mainly images. OK, so uh, I'm going to confirm that. And that's really what drove this feature. So devs saw these graphs. They wanted to understand what's happening. Um, so we, we thought of different approaches on Android. How can you figure out the network usage? Uh, Android allows you to create a VPN client app that will suck all of the network data and send it through. But the problem with that approach is the user has to be involved. The user has to click on a button to allow that, and that doesn't work for, for our product. Um, you can use the laptop as a proxy, get all of the network traffic, sniff it, and then look at it in Wireshark. But again, you can't test for 3G. Right? And a lot of apps behave differently on 3G versus Wi-Fi. So this approach wouldn't have worked. Um, there are actually apps on Android that will do the sniffing for you, but then they need your phone to be rooted. And a lot of our users, I mean, uh, even at Flipkart, when I worked at Flipkart and I built apps, we couldn't do our testing on rooted phones. We wanted our phones to be exactly uh, what the customer has. Um, the OS level stats from Android don't give us granular per endpoint information. And so we looked at something called instrumentation. 
So instrumentation is broadly the process of um, monitoring uh, various things in a running process, right? And it's applied to process control, but in software, you see it like logs, tracing, analytics, and uh, performance monitoring. They all are a type of instrumentation. Um, a lot of these have to be written by the app developer, right? So we looked at another approach called binary instrumentation. Can we take a binary and can we modify it and do our own logging? And there are a lot of examples of this. So the Android Trace View test automation framework, they're doing actually doing this. iOS has a similar tool called Instruments. Uh, how many of you have heard of a company called Rational? Okay, so these are all the old people in the room. Uh, Rational was a really popular company about 10 years ago. Awesome software if you've done, uh, am I right? Yeah, I am. If you've worked on C++, really, really good uh, tools for understanding memory usage. And a lot of the little I co-founding team came from Rational. So there are examples of binary instrumentation. And we said, how can we apply this to Android? So the Android runtime, like you, in Android, you write your apps in Java, but you don't run them on a traditional Java virtual machine. There's something called Dalvik, and that's been uh, custom designed for lower end devices like uh, smartphones. Um, Again, I don't know if you can see this, but in the Android build process, all of your source code gets compiled into dot class files. Uh, your third party libraries and jars are also dot class files. They go through this process called dexing. And dex converts your class files into a format that the Dalvik VM can understand. And that's the dex format. Um, so we said, let's uh, look at, like in, again, in a traditional JVM, there is a way to rewrite classes. So when the class loader loads a class, you can actually have your own um, sort of class that will take that and modify it. And you can do that at runtime. So that's actually used in a lot of Java profiling tools that uh, you can have a production system running and suddenly in the middle you can start um, modifying various classes and understanding what's happening. So Dalvik doesn't support that and so we couldn't use this approach. It interestingly does something very similar, but uh, they have something called an like they have an Android app instrumentation class interface. But when I looked at it, it was only for automated testing. It didn't help us for our um, rewriting. Another approach that's used a lot in the Java world is to just take class files and modify them. And there are very good tools that do that. There's something called Java Assist, ASM. Um, these have to be done at build time. And the problem, again, is a lot of our customers are potentially, um, like, some of our customers don't have access to the source, uh, source code. So for example, Mulia is here. They're a QA team that used to help us at Flipkart, and they don't have access to our build process. And a lot of companies don't want to change their build process to inject instrumentation. It's a little scary. So we said, let's take this binary file, this one dex file, because we know it's there for every app. That's what, what runs on, on, on the VM. And let's see if we can modify that. And again, found projects, mostly research projects. Um, there is a way to convert a dex file back to uh, class files, but that wasn't reliable. Um, so we ended up finding this library called Smalley. Uh, it's written by a hacker who ended up getting hired by Google three years ago. And uh, it takes this dex file, uh, compiles it back into something that looks like assembly. And he gives a library where you can manipulate it. So Smalley was really good because um, we can use that, his library and do all sorts of transformations of the code. And it's very well maintained. It's used in a lot of uh, reverse engineering tools. So we knew that it's like not a research project. So um, so this is the network graph where we see these peaks. Now if we look at this HTTP statistics, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is now telling me at each point of time, right, where is, like what, what network calls are being made. So I can see that mobile APIs, uh, there's a call to mobile API, Flixcart, um, OMT, DRC, which I think is Omniture, right? And over time, I can see every single network call that's going in and out. I can see the amount of data that's being sent, right? So at this instant, I can see 21 bytes uh, KB being sent, nine, by, uh, 9 KB coming back. And at the end of the run, I can understand that, okay, uh, if you look at the top few rows, 300K, 250K, 170K are all Flixcart, which is the image server. Um, mobile API is about, about 50K, and Omniture is about 3K. Right? So I have, I mean, without any access to Flipcart's source code, and I, I swear I don't have access to the source code, uh, I was able to um, get all of this information about the app. And you can do this to um, 
any Android app on, on your device. Uh, so just a little bit on Smalley. Um, this is a simple uh, piece of Java code, hello world. And when I convert it into Smalley, it looks like this. Um, can't get the mouse there. OK. But anyway, you can, yeah, I guess you can read it. So there's a main method. You can see like um, some registers. Um, there's a function called so system out, and it's pass, being passed in a print stream. And then there's a string, hello world. So I'm just trying to give you a sense of after decompiling, what does your Java code actually look like? Uh, and the other part of this was writing wrappers. So for every single HTTP client that is popular on Android, we wrap around it. So every time we see a call to HTTP client or HTTP URL connection, we inject our own wrapper code, do some logging, then make the original call. And then when the call returns, again, we have to wrap around, do some logging. And so we've injected our own logging around the um, HTTP calls. And yeah, it worked. So one, one thing that was nice is that it gives us HTTP level context. If you do this using Wireshark, um, you are basically looking at the packets. But here we can see everything at the HTTP call level. If there's a, um, when, when, the, when the data is being sent out, technically we could even print out all of the data. Uh, we can get error codes. Anything that you see in your app today, right? when you see that HTTP class, we can get all of that data out of that. Works on most apps, works on practically any Android device. It's not tied to any Android OS version. Um, and it opens up a lot of possibilities. So the HTTP is one way of using this. But tomorrow, let's say a user has trouble with database calls. We can wrap around his database calls. Or let's say someone's doing, they're noticing that you know, their UI is taking time to update. Right? And they think it's an async task. So we could try to wrap around async tasks. So this instrumentation for us as a startup opened up a lot of uh, potential uh, features. Um, you guys saw that. And I open sourced a few parts of this. So the enhancement to Smalley that actually goes through, through an app, searches for all of the calls, and replaces them. Uh, that's called Umbretta. Uh, Umbretta is Icelandic for transform. Um, and Clark Kent is another library that if you want to do reporting from inside the app, this, so, so not really instrumentation, but you actually want to go as a user and write code. Uh, Clark Kent is a service that will help you, is a library that will help you write to a, a logging service. So I think that's about it. Um, did I make it, 15 minutes? OK, good. So I have five minutes for questions. Did I go that fast that no, but no one could understand what I said? I think I did. I can do it again. You want me to do it again? I have one question. OK. Uh, what do you do about HTTPS calls? Can you? Sure. No, so the this, this side, on your left. My right, left. right. Right. <laughs> I'm going to look for the yellow guy, yeah. So it's actually a good idea to have people in yellow shirts and waving their hands, because I just have to search for the yellow shirt. OK. So the question is, what do I do for HTTPS calls? Yes, that's right. So that, that's actually handled the same way. In code, um, I just search for the classes that match HTTP and HTTPS, and, and I can replace them. So it's actually, it's pretty much the same process, um, which is interesting, because I'm getting to see stuff that technically you shouldn't be. Um, any other questions? As of today, is there a capability using the little i uh, labs tool to actually say how much data has been consumed per app, and then you know consequentially how much money has gone into using sure. that app? Sure. So the question is, can little i do monitoring per app across, like on a device, right? You want to see if there are 20 apps, understand all 20. Yes. Right. So we don't do that today. That's not a use case that we were looking at. Um, our use case was, you're the app dev for your app. Can we give you information about? your own app. Um, this does come up sometimes, at least in the context of battery, because the yes. Android battery numbers are aggregate. So uh, sometimes people want to know, OK, my app is using x percent, but what are all the other apps on the device using, and are they affecting my app? So we don't do that today. Yeah. Uh, the reason is also because there are some bugs where uh, the battery consumption will indirectly impact uh, the, uh, the data, the money. Like, for example, we found a problem where uh, 
the battery consumption itself will uh, charge uh, eat up 9 rupees per day for the user. The data so consumption, yes, right? Yes, yes. So is there any plan to implement that feature in future? Not, I mean... Because from a testing sure, perspective, sure. I, I see a great value in terms of uh, uh, testing mobile apps and the way it can become powerful. Sure. No, so I think, I think there is a lot of value for this, especially like a device manufacturer. They want to understand, hey, they have this phone and customers are complaining that, hey, your Samsung um, S, you know, S Plus sucks battery. And being able to just look at those profiles and understand each of, each of the apps. So I think there's value in this. It's just not something that we would do. Okay, fair enough. Right. Thank you. Anything else? The food was that good. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Oh, sorry. What about code that is built using ProGuard? Sure, so that's a good question. Um, so ProGuard is a process in Android where before releasing an app, it basically obfuscates your code. So it changes the name of, of a lot of the methods. It strips out whatever symbols, whatever information it can. Right? Uh, so the good thing is that these libraries, um, HTTP client and HTTP URL connection are actually on the phone. And for your app to call those libraries, it has to call it using the the full name. And it, it doesn't get proguarded. It actually has to call org.apache.http.http client. If it was a library that was inside the app, that would have gotten renamed and mangled. So, so for these libraries, it actually works. Um, there are some cases where someone has a custom HTTP library in the app, right, and it doesn't work for that. Does that make sense? Okay, okay one question. We drink beer and go out for lunch. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, okay. Um, so we do a lot of stuff for app monitoring, right? So there's CPU, memory, um, power. Power is interesting. Um, for, we also do a lot of analysis. Once we get this data, at the end, we try to give you, we see certain patterns. So, so one very uh, typical bad network usage pattern on mobile is to like keep making network calls. If you do that, you're not letting the radio sleep, right? So it's actually better to batch up your network calls. So if we, we actually monitor, we know every single call you're making, and if over a period of time we see that you're making frequent network calls, we actually uh, show it as a warning. Like we kind of say, hey, this looks like a bad pattern that's not recommended. Uh, look into this. Right? Another thing is wake locks. So wake locks are a way of keeping the screen active um, or keeping parts of the phone active off on the screen. So if we see that you're holding onto a wake lock for, the, uh, for a long time, even when you're on the background, if we see certain bad patterns, we try to do some analysis and, and flag them. Um, we do a little bit on, on, on the memories, like if we see garbage collection events that are very long, right? we flag those, because that means that you're actually pausing the phone, the UI is pausing for the end user. So, so there's, there's beyond the basic graphs, like there are a bunch of graphs that I showed you, um, there is some analysis and there's a report. So. Hi. Left, right. Yeah. In the end, uh, uh, the last seat. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, so this Little Eye Labs, uh, does it only give the figures about the app or even the sensors? So basically the sensors will be working on one of the power consumptions. Sure. But then on the host level, you have a, a different level of power consumption. So little apps goes from the, all the way to the sensor to the kernel level or only it's on the host? Okay, so uh, it's a good question. Um, some sensors like GPS, right? If we see that you're using GPS, we do flag that, we do track that. Uh, we're not doing any other sensors yet. We've seen some requests, but not, not a lot. GPS is the one that sucks a lot of battery. Um, but you're right, there is a, other apps can be using the GPS in a certain way that would affect our measurements. So the way we treat it is, if there were no other apps using the GPS right now, how much would how much battery would your app consume? And I mean, it's it's a it's a heuristic, but it works because we're trying to say that you may be on a phone where there are, there are no other GPS apps. How would your behavior be? So how much battery would that sensor use? Yeah. Do we have? Okay. Uh, I have one question. So I think we're out of time. Uh, okay, one last question, and then we I can take questions later. Yes, so uh, since I just want to ask the same thing again. Uh, okay. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, 
uh, but then you're saying that, uh, so it's the app which you're monitoring or it's the GPS sensor you're monitoring? So we're monitoring the GPS sensor usage that's attributed to the app. Yeah, but then uh, GPS at the, ho uh, at the kernel will give some other power. It'll, it'll work on a frequency. But then when it comes to the host level, even the, uh, even the uh, app takes different con power consumption. Host level meaning the de device, if you have yeah. different phones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, so good. Um, it's a long answer, but what we've done is power modeling. We've taken a couple of models of phones and said this is how the GPS, how much the GPS would use on this phone, like a Nexus 4 or a Galaxy Nexus. So we modeled it on those things, um, and it's not exactly what will happen on, let's say, a Galaxy Y, but if you do all of your testing on that, the, the modeling is kind of like um, a frame of reference. So it, it, it doesn't give you exact numbers, but it'll give you a sense of your app with this test case. I can talk more about it afterwards. It's a long answer. So thanks, and I'll be around if you have more questions.